Tesla has many advantages over legacy cars, but there's still one part of Tesla ownership that even the biggest fans say needs improvement, and that is the service. Service is a huge part of owning a car, and it's actually a big reason why I never reserved a Rivian. Now, don't get me wrong, the Rivian R1T looks amazing, and it's an incredible vehicle from what I've seen, but Rivian is still a very young company, and I wasn't sure owning something so new from such a startup as company would be worth it because if it needed service, I don't know how far I'd have to travel and what their service infrastructure would be like. And that fear was something I also had when I reserved my Tesla Model 3 back in 2016. Although the fear was at a much smaller scale because Tesla had already been delivering mini cars for years at that point. But Tesla is still a relatively new and young car company. Now most legacy cars can be serviced at a nearby dealership or at a third party mechanic. However, I will say Tesla's single biggest advantage when it comes to service is their mobile technicians. See, my closest Tesla service center is two hours away in Cincinnati, Ohio, which sounds like a nightmare, but after owning my Model 3 for over four years now, every one of my service appointments for that car has been completed by a Tesla mobile technician who came to my location and fixed the issue without me having to drive to a service center and take time out of my schedule. It's actually been really convenient, but there's a limit to that only a certain amount of repairs can be done by the mobile technician. Most major service requires the car to be taken to a service center, which for me is at least a four hour round trip drive. Now the sparse amount of service centers is becoming a concern given that Tesla recently delivered a million new vehicles in the span of one year. Now with this huge onslaught of Teslas hitting the road, service will become more and more important as an owner. And Elon himself recently emphasized how important service is when he tweeted, working on Tesla North American service, goal is two thirds of cars receive same day service, no wait. Now that'll be amazing if they can do that because right now Tesla struggles with wait times. When I had to get my bumper replaced a few years ago, it took five weeks just to get the bumper from Tesla to my local body shop. And that was before any supply shortages. Now the growing number of new Tesla vehicles is putting pressure on the service capacity and it can take weeks to get an appointment scheduled depending on the location. It's even got to the point where a recent report stated that entry level Tesla workers who have no training in servicing cars are being placed at service centers to work on vehicles, although it's for more simple tasks like changing tires. Now, as for me, my wife's brand new Model Y has a number of problems that need serviced and I thought this would be a great time to document the current state of Tesla service and show you what Tesla service is like and how long it takes to get these problems fixed. Now to begin, I made the first service request on June 1st and the soonest available appointment was 12 days out for June 13th. Good morning, we're in the Model Y taking it two and a half hours to Dayton, Ohio to fix this annoying high frequency, high pitch whining noise coming from the rear motor. I just took uh, one of the service technicians for a test drive so he could hear the noise and uh, immediately he said, yeah, that's not normal. And they're going to look at it and they're going to give me a loaner vehicle, Model 3 for the day. Actually, they're going to keep the car for a couple days just to make sure that it's nothing serious. He said it's probably due to some insulation so here is the uh, rear seat. Uh, he took the seat off and pointed out that this blue insulation down there, right there, it goes along the whole seat and that's supposed to actually block out the noise of the motor. I think he pointed out that it's not just properly seated or, or something like that. That could be a simple fix to, uh, to fix the issue, but it may have to require a, uh, a new uh, motor replacement. So we'll see. I've had a great experience so far just within, you know, just the 10 minutes I've been here. This is this brand new service center. Uh, it's been open for like less than two months. Everybody here is super nice. It's gonna be like 10 hours out of my time to drive back and forth, but they don't actually do paint here. So I'm gonna have to go to Cincinnati probably. Uh, I'd like to get that fixed if they are willing to pay for it. So we'll see how that goes. Speaking of Tesla employees, this month Tesla recently announced that they laid off 229 employees with fears of a recession brewing, and it's not just Tesla, wealth preservation and diversification are at the top of investors' minds, with many portfolios looking drastically different compared to a year ago. 
And today's sponsor, Masterworks, is here to help with a way for accredited and non-accredited investors to access a real asset that actually improves during times of inflation. It's been performing so well that Masterworks portfolio is currently up 12% on an annualized basis so far this year, and not to mention they just delivered 27% net returns to investors earlier this month. Masterworks specializes in fine art, and they analyze millions of data points to identify which paintings could rise in value. Then they acquire the paintings and break them into SEC qualified shares. It's pretty genius because even during the tech sell-off and crypto nightmare, the New York Times showcased fine art as quote-unquote bulletproof and the art market has doubled S&P 500 returns over the last 25 years. Now with every investment, there is capital risk involved, but when looking at Masterworks performance and plans for the future, it's not surprising that they're already valued at a billion dollars, making them a startup unicorn like SpaceX and Tesla. Now demand is high, so there is currently a waiting list to get started, but if you click my special link in the description below, you can jump straight to the front of the line. Exactly two days later, they fixed the whining noise issue. Basically, they said it was just the foam insulation that needed to be reseated. They also actually looked at my steering wheel, the, the eh, is getting a, an annoying, you know, squeak sound as it was going in and out. And they fixed that. It was really just a matter of kind of reseating the rubber material. And he put some lubrication on it as well to help it. And it seems fine. Let's try it out. And here's a big problem with the way Tesla does their service right now. You can only do it through the mobile app. And once you have a current service scheduled in the app, you can't add any more. Once I put my service request in for the whining noise, I can't do another service request for the paint issue, even though it's at another service center. So I can't like go in there and do uh, more than one service request at a time. So you kind of have to wait for one service to get done before you can schedule another. That just adds more time because the longer you wait, you're going to risk getting uh, an appointment that's weeks out because they're constantly getting booked up. So that's something that needs to be probably fixed with Tesla. The, the service is allow multiple service requests to be input at the same time. First drive after getting the motor whine noise fixed. Let's see if it's actually gone. Now I thought the high pitched whiny noise was gone when I first drove it because the foam insulation did help drown out the sound a little, but I was on the highway for most of the drive home, which was hard to hear the sound over the road and wind noise. But when I got closer to home and was driving slower on city streets, I noticed that the noise was still there. I can hear it whenever I press the accelerator and it's actually the loudest at exactly 47 to 48 miles an hour, like a dog whistle or a dentist tool. Uh, take a listen to see if you can hear it. So even though the foam insulation helped a little, the sound is still there and it's constant at certain speeds. And after doing some research on the Tesla forums, I actually discovered that many others are experiencing the same issue with their Model Y dating all the way back to 2020 when the Model Y first came out. And what's even crazier is that I found that someone else stated the exact same 48 mile an hour issue as me. So now I have to schedule another service visit at the Cincinnati Service Center, which is another two weeks of waiting until the next available appointment, all for a problem on a brand new vehicle that should have been noticed and fixed before the car was set for delivery. Today was supposed to be my appointment for in Cincinnati for the motor wine noise and the rear bumper. And they messaged me yesterday, the day before my appointment, and said that the rear fascia has not been delivered yet. So that's good news and bad news. Good news is they didn't even question me about my bumper. I figured I would have to take the car in and they would have to look at it. And I thought maybe there was a possibility of them saying, oh, there's nothing we can do about the bumper. But they already ordered a pre-painted fascia to replace the mismatched bumper. So that's great news. However, they didn't tell me that until the day before and now there is another delay. They said it's taking longer than expected to get the actual bumper shipped to Tesla. So um, I had to reschedule uh, and the next available appointment was not until another two weeks out. So by the time I get to Cincinnati, that'll be around six weeks after I got the car. So six weeks uh, of, of kind of going through delays and service appointments to get these things fixed. 
just dropped off the Model Y here at the service center in Cincinnati and they provided me with the Model S loaner right here, which is awesome. That's one of the best things about, you know, Tesla, they give you Tesla loaner vehicles for free uh, if they have them available. So, and every time I've needed one, they've had one and it's really seamless. So I get to have this for as long as they need to keep my car. So the bad news is they, they have to keep the Model Y, but I took the service technician for a test drive and he heard the whining noise and they're gonna take a look at that. And what I really love so far about Tesla service is like they, everybody that I've dealt with uh, for the past four years since I've got my Model 3 is like, they're really willing to help and listen to your problem and, and uh, willing to try to fix it some way. Hopefully they can get this stuff fixed. So the service center in Cincinnati had the Model Y for two days and they fixed most of this stuff. Uh, so they fixed my USB drive error. Uh, they also fixed my biggest frustration, which was the motor whine issue. They actually replaced the entire rear drive unit, which is great. I love that they actually took uh, that approach because that is a not an easy task to do, not an easy service to do. And I was afraid that maybe they would just say it's normal whine, but no, they, they noticed the whine and replaced the whole entire drive unit. However, I did notice on the way home and I've been driving it, the high frequency noise is, is kind of gone mostly for the most part as far at low speeds, but now it's starting to, I start to hear it at like around 65, 66 miles an hour. Which is something that's telling me that maybe these drive units on the Model Ys just are different and they have this high frequency noise at certain speeds. It's been fixed, but I am going to um, keep an eye on it. Hopefully it gets better because it's still, I can still slightly hear it at those certain speeds, but it definitely has gotten better at the lower speeds. Now for the final issue, the rear bumper, they actually didn't replace it. They had a fascia ordered and it, it kind of was weird because I had to wait and prolong my appointment just to wait for that fascia to get delivered to the service center for them to replace it. But uh, I guess their paint expert there decided that the rear bumper it doesn't need to be replaced as they said it's normal they said i think in the remarks they said it's based on the angle of the pearl white multi-coat so like i said 99 percent of people can't really tell the difference probably if they're looking at it i mainly just kind of pursued that just for the sake of this video i wanted to see what tesla would do what their what they uh, what their solutions that they provided were at the end of the day they decided that it was normal so just know if you are buying a tesla the white paint is going to be probably mismatched on the rear bumper compared to the rest of the car. And also, if you're out and about and you're by a Tesla, a white Tesla, just take a look at the rear bumper and just see if it looks slightly mismatched to you. You might notice it more and more now that you're looking for it. So overall, my experience with Tesla service has been good. Everybody I've dealt with individually has been really nice, really kind, willing to help. Uh, they definitely fixed my issues, or tried to at least. They need to expand their service centers and install them and put them in more places, obviously, because the more Tesla owners that are hitting the road, the more service centers are gonna be needed so the wait times aren't as long. And also, they probably need to improve their quality control for their new vehicles. Who knows how many service requests and service appointments are because of new vehicles that probably shouldn't have to have those service appointments in the first place. So if they improve quality control, improve their new vehicles, make sure that new vehicles don't have as many issues as they do, that would help out greatly and reduce the stress on their, their current service centers right now to allow the Tesla owners who actually need service for their existing cars real problems. And I wanted to end this on a very, very positive note as well. This behind me is the Tesla service center here in Louisville, Kentucky. It's brand new, hasn't technically opened yet, but it's like opening probably in the next week or so. Now, if I have to get my Model 3 or Model Y serviced, I don't have to drive four hours out of the way. Hopefully they can get the quality control a little bit better, but they are definitely putting out new service centers and this is proof right here. So thank you for watching my experience with Tesla service with my new Model Y. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what your experience with Tesla service has been in the past in the comments below. Thank you for watching. My name is Andy. I'll talk to you in the next one.